Hello students, welcome to module 2 on the unit on reading. In the last module, we looked at the importance of reading, what we read, the type of text and the different ways in which we read. By the end of this module, you will be able to identify the topic of a sentence or paragraph. You will be able to identify the sentences and the position in, in the, the paragraph, paragraph and guess the meaning of unfamiliar words. In the last unit, we also noted what is involved in reading and who can claim to be a good reader. In other words, what should an effective reader be able to do? We hope that you have made it a point to look at the complete list of the abilities of a good reader what is commonly referred to as the sub-skills of reading. Today we are going to work with one important sub-skill or ability. We are going to focus on the ability to identify the main idea of a paragraph. A good way to start is to examine the main idea of a sentence before building up to read a larger piece of text. While a sentence might hold a lot of information, it usually offers a key idea and the key idea usually tells us who a person is or what an object is or what a person or an object is doing. Let's look at the sentences in Learn Task 2.1 and 2.2 in your worksheet together. Millions of students across the Philippines have returned to the classroom after one of the world's longest school closures. This sentence tells us about students, their numbers, their nationality and how long schools have been closed. These details are helpful in understanding the text but the key idea or the main idea in this sentence is simply students have returned to school. Yes. Here's another sentence for you to look at. NASA has called off the launch of the biggest new moon rocket ever, the SLS, due to the frost build up in its engine. What does this sentence tell us? What are the key words? This sentence tells us about the agency, the name of the rocket, its size, and the reason why the launch has been put off. So the main idea or thought here is that the rocket launch has been cancelled. Students, here's a tip for you. News items often include phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, as you may recall, are phrases that contain a verb and a particle such as a preposition. And they also have a special meaning. They have a new meaning. Look at the sentence we just worked with and see if you can identify the phrasal verb used. We are sure you were able to identify called off as the phrasal verb and you must have noticed that its synonyms put off and cancel have been used. Please go to do task 2.1 in worksheet 2. You will find three sentences given there. Read the first one and write down the key idea. Once you've done that, we'll discuss it. Now that you've looked at the sentence, let us discuss the first one. French tax authorities have got an unexpected windfall as AI has helped authorities discover more than 20,000 undeclared private swimming pools. Does this sentence talk about objects or people? Well, I think it talks about both. And in order to identify the main idea, it is important to check whether we are familiar with unknown words. When you find an unfamiliar word, don't reach for a dictionary immediately. Try to guess what it could mean from the context. Take this phrase, tax authorities have got an unexpected windfall. What could windfall mean? First, blank the word windfall and your sentence will read as tax authorities have got an unexpected something. 
Another cue that could help us understand the meaning is the word helped. What happens when tax authorities are helped? What do they obtain? Money, revenue. Yes. Which they wouldn't have got otherwise. otherwise. So this is how we guess the meaning of unfamiliar words from the context and this is what a good reader should be able to do as we've already discussed in module one. And what about AI? Oh, I'm sure they all know that it means artificial intelligence. With this in hand, let us find the main idea of another sentence. What does the sentence speak about? AI and how it has discovered secret pools. Who does it speak about? The French tax authorities and how they have fined people. So the other key word we have is undeclared pools. And the main idea then would be that AI helps French IT department find numerous secret pools. Read the other two sentences and write down the key ideas of each. Let us now look at topics and main ideas in paragraphs. We begin with paragraphs first so that by learning to identify them, we can move on to longer pieces of writing. In order to understand the meaning of a paragraph, one must identify the topic and the main idea. Now, finding the main idea in a paragraph is not easy, but it is a crucial skill to become an effective reader. When we are capable in this aspect, we will accomplish much in an academic setting. So what do we mean by a main idea? The main idea is the author's controlling point about the topic. It usually includes the topic and the author's opinion or attitude about the topic. So to identify the main idea, you should be asking who or what is the paragraph about? The answer would be the topic and this could be stated in just a few words. And we also have to find out what does the author have to say about the topic? And the answer is the point he is making. The point is also stated in a few words. So once you've identified these pieces, you can combine them to state the author's main idea in a single sentence. Yes. Main idea is the topic plus the point. So let's now look at the paragraph in Learn Task 2.3. Born around 1210, Sandhyata Kieta is credited by oral tradition with founding the powerful and wealthy Mali Empire in West Africa. Sandhyata was the lion prince of the Malinka people of West Africa. Various oral traditions collectively known in English as the Epic of Sandhyata, describe him as a warrior, able administrator, magician and hunter. These oral traditions themselves are considered to possess supernatural powers through their communication with the spirits of the bush. That's an interesting topic. Notice its features. The paragraph is a group of sentences about some related subject or topic. And each sentence states some idea about the topic. And all of these ideas add up to form the main idea of the paragraph. Remember, the all important questions to bear in mind while formulating the main idea are What is the topic? What is listed about the topic? And what do the major details have in common? So if we look at the paragraph that we just uh, discussed, what is the topic here? Sandhyata. And what is the point? That he was a great person, founded a very great kingdom in the 13th century. So 
the main idea then would be that Sandayata was a great king who founded the Mali Empire in the 13th century. Yes. Usually, in well-written articles, we can identify a single main idea in every paragraph. The key point that is usually expressed in the form of a topic sentence is often found in the paragraph's first sentence with subsequent sentences providing the supporting details. It can, however, occur in the middle of the sentence, at the end, or even be split across the paragraph. It may not even be mentioned at all, at least not explicitly. Now go to worksheet 2 and look at learn task 2.4 on clocks. Identify the main idea and see where it is placed. Here are some tips to help you. Ask the following questions. Who? Does this passage speak about a group of people or a person? When? Does the information contain a reference to time? Where? Does this text mention a place? Why? Do you find a reason or explanation for something that happened? How? Does this information indicate a method or a theory? In other words, remember Rudyard Kipling's six honest serving men. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when. And how and where and who. So let's look at the paragraph. Before clocks were made, people kept track of time by other means. In ancient Egypt, people used a water clock. Water dripped slowly from one clay pot into another. People measured time according to how long it took one pot to empty and the other one to fill. Candle clocks were common during the Middle Ages. As such, when a candle burned, marks on its side showed about how much time had passed. A final ancient way to measure time was the sundial, which used the movement of the sun across the sky. The shadows moving across the face of the sundial showed the current time. So what is the main idea? And where can it be found? We're sure you must have got it right. The main idea is, before clocks were made, people kept track by other means. It is found in the first sentence of the paragraph and explains the subject being discussed in the text. The author also gives us three supporting details in the form of examples that show how time was kept in ancient times, water clocks, candles and sundials. Now go back to worksheet 2 and complete do task 2.2. Sometimes the main idea is placed in the middle of the paragraph. When this happens, the first few sentences introduce the topic. The main idea is then presented and the last few sentences present the supporting details. Go to worksheet 2 and look at learn task 2.5 on McDonald's. Take a minute to identify the main idea and notice its placement. The United States seems to be in love with the idea of going out to eat. Because of this, a real variety of restaurants has come about specializing in all kinds of foods. McDonald's is the king of a subgroup of restaurants called fast food restaurants. Chances are, no matter where you live, there is a McDonald's restaurant near you. There are even McDonald's in the Soviet Union. So let's see. The main idea is that McDonald's is the king of fast food. Am I right? Yes. And it is in this uh, main point is in the middle of the paragraph in the third sentence. Now that we have learned to identify the main idea, go back to worksheet 2 
and try out do task 2.3. Remember to first identify the topic and then ask the questions we discussed earlier. Now let's look at another position where the main idea can be placed. Authors often place the main idea in the last sentence of a paragraph. The author gives supporting information first and then makes the point in the last sentence. When the main idea is expressed in the last sentence, it summarizes the information in the paragraph and it also acts as a link to the information in the next paragraph. Here's an example for you. It's in your worksheet under Learn Task 2.6. Most teenagers and young adults do not know what they want to do for the rest of their lives. It's a big decision. There are a number of things you can do to narrow the choices. For example, you can take an interest test, do some research on your own about a career, try volunteer work in the field in which you're interested, or job shadow, in which you spend a day with a person who is working in a field that interests you. These are just a few helpful ideas as you begin to choose a career. In this paragraph, the main idea is placed at the end of the paragraph and it is few, few ideas to help the reader choose a career. The entire paragraph tells us how we can choose a career. Now go to worksheet 2 and try out do task 2.4. Finally, dear students, let's look at one of the more difficult ways in which the main idea can be presented. An implicit main idea. It refers to a main idea that is not stated directly, but is strongly suggested by the supporting ideas and details in the passage. Facts about the topic are introduced before the topic is actually stated and the implied main idea can be drawn from these facts, reasons or examples. To determine the implied main idea, look at the topic, the supporting details expressed as facts or examples, descriptions and explanations given, the author's thought pattern, and the author's purpose. You will see that we are referring to many of the ideas that we have mentioned in module one and we have discussed and practiced earlier even in this module. Let's examine a reading passage where the main idea is implicit. Go to your worksheet and read Learn Task 2.7. Identify the topic, supporting details, and the author's purpose. Egypt's pyramids are the oldest existing buildings in the world. These ancient tombs are also among the world's largest structures. The largest pyramid stands taller than a 40-story building and covers an area greater than 10 football fields. More than 80 pyramids still exist and their once smooth limestone surfaces hide secret passageways and rooms. The pyramids of ancient Egypt served a vital purpose, to protect the pharaoh's bodies after death. Each pyramid held not only the pharaoh's preserved body, but also all the goods he would need in his life after death. Let's quickly discuss this. You must have found out by now that the topic of the paragraph is pyramids and there are three groups of supporting ideas age, size and the purpose of the pyramids. The author has organized the supporting details into characteristics or traits of the pyramids and his purpose seems to be to define a pyramid. Here's a tip for you. 
The main idea must be broad enough to cover all the details of the paragraph. However, it should not be so broad that includes details that are not mentioned or the main idea cannot be as long as the paragraph. So the implied or the implicit main idea here is that pyramids are structures with several distinctive traits. If you go back to your worksheet, do task 2.5, you will find another paragraph in which the main idea is implicit. As we have been doing so far, dear students, do locate the main idea and its placement. Before we wrap up this module, let's summarize what we have done. We've learned how to identify the topic of a sentence and a paragraph. Use the topic and keywords to identify the main idea. And identify the main idea when it occurs at different places in a paragraph. And finally, use the context to identify the meaning of new or unfamiliar words. We hope that this has been useful for you. You will find practice activities in your worksheet. Links to online resources have also been provided. Do take a look. Keep reading and enjoy the experience. Remember to make finding the main point of a paragraph a habit. And when you do this, you will begin to understand the printed word better and it will lead you to write better. We will meet you soon in module 3. Until then, read and enjoy.